We have the final match today between Trinidad and Tobago women and Barbados women. Match referee Stuart Rawlins here with us. Karishma has the point. Tails. Tails is the call? Yes. It's a tail, so we'll have a bat. You decided to have a bat? Yeah. Oh, decision. Why did you make that decision? I'm uh, just going to see if you can put a total along the board and then defend it. I think second game work for it last night. So that's some choice on the game this week. Yeah, still a lot to play for. You can't get to second uh, win the tournament. But still a lot to play for four years, girls, right? Yeah, a lot still to play for. Uh, still places up for Rex and we've seen that time on the 19th. Yeah. I was camp coming up, so this is still a good opportunity for them. All right, any changes to your squad? Oh, no, same level. All right, all the best for you. Thank you. Krishna, you've lost the ball, you decided to have a bat. What would you have done? We would have a bowl. We would have had a bowl. All right, still a lot for you to play for. There's a chance for you to grab second if you are able to pull off, pull it off today, win the game, and then get a bonus point. Um, any sort of tactics heading into this game today? Yeah, I think we just gotta believe in our skills, you know, and back our strengths, which is um, bowling out things for low to help. So I think this will work in our favor. All right, is there any change to your 11 today? No, same 11 today. All right, all the best to you, Kalishma. Thank you. All right, well, there you have it. The toss was won by Barbados, and they have decided to have a bad first. Yes, and welcome back. Final match in this Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze. Trinidad and Tobago versus Barbados, who won the toss, decided to have a first knock tonight. The teams for you, the players out for Trinidad and Tobago, Katie Jazz Mitchell, Celine O'Neill, and Brianna Haricharan. And for Barbados, Shamilia Connell out injured, Zalia Campbell, and Rihanna Godin Fort. So these are the players out for Barbados. Trinidad and Tobago, of course, will be searching for a win tonight with a bonus point as well to try and secure that second place spot. At the moment, Guyana is sitting pretty there. So we're about to start things off here. Steffi Sugrim, very economical bowler for Trinidad and Tobago, especially in the power play. About to start things off here to Kaisia Knight, Trisha and Holder at the non striker's end. So, slip in place, mid wicket, long on, out as well. And this one is smashed in the region of that mid wicket area. The fielder at long on gives chase. A bit of football skill shown, shown there by Leon Kirby, and they pick up two. So an aggressive start from Barbados. Sugrim, a change of angle for her, coming over the wicket. Left arm over to the left hander. Walked off the pad on that occasion, but straight to square leg. <coughs> Full and driven straight to Brittany Cooper. So Steffi Sugrim picks up that very important wicket of Kaisia Knight. She's doing a jig in celebration. And the first wicket goes down for Barbados. A change of angle walking for Steffi Sugrim. Play straight in the hands of Brittany Cooper, who takes a comfortable catch head high. And the first wicket goes down in the first over. Two youngsters in the middle now. Trisha and Holder 
who's yet to, yet to face a ball, is joined by Nijani Komabach. A very important wicket at Trinidad and to, to be able to secure early there. Sugrim picking up that big wicket to start. So they'll certainly be happy by that. The ball is coming left arm around the wicket too. So come about right hand and strike. So Sugrim with the change of angle back over around the wicket now. bit flatter on that occasion but sliding on batter attempts to play a drive and missed it some respect shown at the end of the over a successful one at the end of it Barbados a two for one So first over completed a successful one for Trinidad and Tobago. Kanisha Isaacs, the ball in hand. So Isaacs with the second over. I'm joined by Troy Mills. Good evening, Stacey Ann. And the Trini Bagans off to a flying start as it were. Success in the first over. And I don't think any skipper would ask for anything better than that. Two runs, one wicket. A bit of width offered there. Holder not able to get across to put it away. Slip backward point point cover. That's the ball there from Isaacs. He's a pretty skinny customer. You always have to watch for the one that's sliding into you. That occasion that third delivery is coming back in to the right handed batter. The force two were going away from her. With Arford. Just missing out on some wide delivery so far, Trish and Holder. Maybe a case where she needs to get her footwork moving early in the innings. Just get across to that, get some bat to it to get off the mark. make some sort of connection but doesn't time it properly again still get still a bit planted on the, the crease it's just not getting across a little bit of anxiety a little bit of anxiety come batch running down the track getting about halfway and being sent back rightfully so we are too wide this time from Isaac Signal signal by umpire Brown. Two umpires in the game. 
today, Maria Abbott and Caroline Brown. Maria Abbott at square leg. Full hit on the pad. Seem to be headed down. So just a wide coming from that over. Two overs gone. Barbados, three for one. When they would have come to St. Kitts, they would have been the defending champions in both editions. However, they relinquished both titles, both going to Jamaica. We would have seen the presentation ceremony just after that match. And the Jamaicans, extremely jubilant. As if they would have won the World Cup. So Subran with a second over in the power play. Always tight at those stumps, Subran. This is one of the reasons why she's been so economical for Trinidad and Tobago in the power play. It's been pretty hard to score off of. Driven out to that fielder at cover point. So, not able to score any of these battles so far. Tossing it up a little more. This is driven beautifully. And she picks up a boundary this time. Nigerian Johnny Comabach. And she picked it up early, positioned herself, and executed a beautiful drive to get off the mark. Short that occasion on that occasion and come about you certainly feel like she's missed out there. Indeed. Hops to leave it alone to complete the over. Four from it. Barbada seven for one. Trinidad and Tobago keeping things tight from the word go and picking up a wicket in the process. 2.33 runs per over. The current run rate. We will expect that to expect to see that increase. But the Trinidadians they are always coming at your spin, spin and more spin. She gets off the mark on that occasion, Trisha and Holder. Single squeeze out to cover. Now the throw came back in to Isaac who was there to have hurt herself in the process. Probably. Trying to stop that ball from going away for extra runs. And chances are it would have been four. It was thrown with some power. And she had positioned herself correctly behind the stumps. And that's Cooper it is. Would have thrown it.
Seems to be okay, back up on her feet. Moving well. So come about to face her first delivery from this end, from Isaacs. A slip in place, two fielders out cover and deep third. Oh, and she's bold out. All over the place. <laughs> I couldn't ask for anything better than that. And if the captain might be thinking they'd like to see her being struck again by a ball coming in. Not really coming across. And uh, bold all over the place is Cumberbatch. Yeah, she was planted on the crease there, Cumberbatch. No foot movement. I spoke about that delivery that comes back in to the right-hander from Isaac. She's a skiddy bowler, so you always have to be mindful of that when you're facing her. Cumberbatch on that occasion, just stuck on the crease. No foot movement. And the ball crashed through the gate. Stumps all over the place. So Isaac strikes as well in the power play. Barbados are 8 for 2. Kaisho on the night walks to the middle. At this stage, the Trinidadians, their tails are on their backs. Second wicket in the fourth over. They don't mind picking up a wicket every two, three overs. Eight for two. In some trouble here, Tri the Barbados. Haven't been having a good run this year in neither the Super 50s or the 20s. Yeah, they haven't had a good tournament, but still an opportunity for them to try and rebuild and finish the tournament on a high. Full delivery to start tonight. Not able to put it away. Yes, they had a tough tournament, but still lots of positives for them. Trisha and Holder was able to find some form with the battle shirt. We saw what she's capable of. They have young Erin Dean as well. Quite a fine for them. Young half spinner. So something for them to rebuild with. That one called a wide. Yeah, something for them to work with and rebuild with, with their eye on possible, you know, next year's tournament. Definitely. They have some good young players. No ball signaled. So a chance for Kaisho on a night to get a free hit and get her eye in. Free, free hit for overstepping there, Kanisha Isaacs. So a chance to free the arms here, Kaisha on a night. Barbados, they have the opportunity to move from the seller position to fifth were they to win this game. Slams it down the ground, has to throw for a quick single. She makes it quite easily. And I know one continent, one country will be back in Barbados wholeheartedly, apart from Barbadians would be Guyana. Guyana, they would have won their match earlier. They were in fourth at the start of this round, the final round. Oh, it's lovely. That is indeed a lovely shot. Doesn't have the legs to get to the boundary. What a beautiful square drive. A nicely played there by Trishan Holder. We faced a number of short, wide deliveries similar to that one, but wasn't able to get bat on it on that occasion. Did so. Placed it well to pick up two.
Trinidad and Tobago. They will need to win this match to stay in the competition, to be second in the competition. Another brace again by Holder. For two after four overs, not the greatest of starts for Barbados, but these two should be looking to rebuild. Shouldn't be look they certainly came into this match with a total in mind, one that might be challenging for Trinidad and Tobago. So they need to rebuild, chance for them to reassess things. Two wickets down early in the power play is never a good sign for any team. So you have to find a way to pick up runs and stop the fall of more wickets. So cover comes in the circle. That ball signal by umpire Maria Abbott. I think because the rag on the back of Sugrin fell out of our pocket while the ball was being delivered there. They are always tied to those stumps, Steffi Sugrim. Very disciplined bowler. She's changed from left arm round, she's now left arm over. First run of the over. And the Trinidadians won't mind at all. The question of how much is a good target for the team batting first will always be playing on everybody's minds. Well, the way I look at it, when you're heading into a game, the first thing you have to know is who is your opposition and what, what, ha what have they done in the tournament so far. So when you're heading into this match, you certainly, as Bar Barbados, you should be thinking against Trinidad, what is a good total against Trinidad? That's the first thing they should be thinking. So... Nicely done by Pascal in the cover area. So, yes, Trinidad and Tobago, they have a number of impressive batters in their lineup. You have Sao, you have Janaba Joseph, Cooper the veteran, Kirby with some power as well. But they haven't quite fired in the tournament, at least not consistently. Looking to play across the line and it's bold. So always tied to the stumps, as I mentioned, Sugrim. And Trisha and Holder, just looking to play this one to the onside, is, has been bold. And that one actually coming back into her. And it's a case of you hit I miss Sugrim. 
Yes, yeah, so 16 for 3 now, 5 overs gone, and I'll continue with what I was saying. So in the game against Windward Islands, when Trinidad and Tobago played them, they had 84 runs to win that game, and they struggled to get it, in I think, in the last over. On other occasions, they haven't really stood up with the bat. They were bowled out for 66 against Guyana. So Barbados coming into this game needed to firstly think about what sort of total do I need to get against Trinidad and Tobago to win the game, and how do I go about approaching it. So far, I've seen a lot of batters look to go big very early. And case in point, that wicket of Trisha and Holder looking to manufacture a shot that wasn't there. I'm not seeing a lot of drop and runs. I'm not seeing a lot of intent to pick up singles, at least if you cannot get the big, the big boundaries away. So 16 for 3 now. That's where they are. Alia Alin and Kaishi on a night in the middle. An experienced pair. These two need to find a way to get the scoreboard taken over and try and get themselves to what can be a threatening score to Trinidad and Tobago. I am not saying that Trinidad can come out here and score 130 if it's given to them. But how they've gone is so far in the tournament, Barbados should have thought about that coming into this game and look to first get to a target that can be competitive. Bit of wit off and slam through the covers. That'll be four. So that's one way to go about it. Too wide and perfect gap finding there from Kai Shona Knight. And actually waiting, positioning herself. Quick eyes, quick feet. Positioning herself and smacking it <laughs> to the covers for four. And hence, with that question, what is a good total? The Duckworth Lewis takes something like that, the number of resources you have in hand, and you're going to bat. There is no target you're facing. You have to set a target. Played oppishly, but hands just in front of young Janaba Joseph. So a change of angle now. I'm Karishma Ramarak after being hit for four off our first ball. It's now around the wicket to Kaishona Knight. Giving that some Ian. Just driving out to, to cover this night. And Trinidad won't mind that happening all night. The pigeons in dire straits. This one is aerial. It's in the air. Oh, it goes through the hand of Janaba Joseph. And a chase by young Ramnath. But it goes for four. So a chance early to Kaishona Knight. And having to go back is not never going to be easy. But some will argue she got both hands to it. She should have held on. And as if to add insult to injury, the ball going into the boundary for four. Yes, just couldn't get herself in position quick enough. Janava Joseph, a smart ball in from Karishma Ramarak. Almost getting the wicket. This time she places it in the gap, but good fielding by Ramnath to cut it off. And it's just one. Indeed, and yes, the Trinidad and Tobago team will be a little disheartened. That one didn't stick, but nonetheless, at this stage, they ain't the driving seat. But cricket, oh lovely cricket, we can see things change in the in, in an instant. And we've seen teams inched and clawed the, themselves back into the game. Yes, and these two are experienced enough. They should be looking to play the match situation now. Swings it across the line, but straight to that field, a young Ramnath, who's been in the firing line so far in this over, which comes to an end, the end of the power play. Trinidad and Tobago women, they're 25 for three. A very good power play for the field in Trinidad and Tobago team. 
picking up three wickets, limiting Barbados to just 25 runs. Just going back, just to add to what I said earlier in terms of coming into the game, you also have to think about bowlers to target. You know that Trinidad and Tobago, Steppy Sugrim is a very important part of their attack. And her four overs, they're usually quite miserly, which is so, but she hasn't really been picking up a lot of wickets. But her bowling has been phenomenal. A lot of teams have shown respect to her. Tonight, she was able to pick up two in the power play. Two very important wickets as well. So you certainly have to think about bowlers to target in this Trinidad and Tobago lineup. Shalini Samaru with ball in hand. And it's not just a case of going and playing and batting. You're right, picking up which bowler we're going to go at. And when you start going at bowlers, you also put pressure on the fielding captain. Because they would have come into the game with a plan. And yes, the way things are going, they may have to change the plan. And they definitely will at some point. With Arford, which is played out to the cover area. Just one. Usually you see Karishma looking to go to Corbina Alexander, for example. At some pace on the ball. And you might also see Kirby being used. I'm not sure if she'll use all spinners tonight. Celine O'Neill is in the lineup. She's another one that they can turn to. You have to think about which bowlers to put pressure on early. So I think they could have done well without going at Sugrim early with very aggressive shots. Three batters in the shed. Played nicely. This is driven lovely through the covers. Crashes into the boundary now for four. Elegant looking shot. Waiting, adjusting, and then smacking it through the covers for another boundary. These two captain, these two batters will need to stay there to see Barbados to a respectable total. Goes across this time. This will be back-to-back -back boundaries for Barbados women. Going eerily, but deliberate in that shot. She knew where, she knew where that mid-wicket fielder was. And the shot was devised to clear her, which it did successfully. Talking about bowlers to put pressure on. There you go. Shalini Samaru, newly introduced into the attack after the power play. Yes. Aliya Alin has decided to take her on and is doing well so far, nine runs from the over. So we will give the captain something else to think about. Goes down the ground this time, but just for one. She's decided that she's going to take on Samaru in this over. Ten runs from it, one ball remaining. Welcome to the party, Samaru. Not the introduction she would have liked, but no doubt the Bajans there smiling. The score has shot up to 35 for 3 in 6.5. So a single, for, should be a single to close things off. 11 runs coming from it. Barbados women, 36 for three. And one of the things we have seen throughout this tournament is the fact that at some point, all the teams would have used six, seven bowlers, in some cases eight. And the bowling has been very deep indeed. I think in the match this morning, Guyana, they would have only used five bowlers, which has been a rarity in the competition. Some captains in these limited over versions, they are under pressure. Who could I get to? Who two bowlers could I get to fill up a quota for me or complement it? That hasn't been the case 
with this CG D to Daffobet T20 Blaze. The Samara Ramnath to bowl now. Some width offered. And this has been delightfully played away and just trickles into the boundary. So another four. The scoreboard is moving now for Barbados women. And Ramnath being introduced to the game, the, the spell on the fire. Very young, so it's nice to see how she will be coming back from this. She enjoyed her, her Super 50 against Barbados. I think she would have picked up three wickets, including, is it Casey and Knight on 93? Yeah, quick single taken, but that's really smart batting from these two. Excellent running as well to go with it. Indeed, very soft hands. Two experienced players in the middle for Barbados. Capitalizing on every opportunity to score. Good, sensible cricket. Coming back well is Ramnath. Sweeps it, but the field is well set for that sort of shot. Straight to Cooper on the square leg boundary. And this is a good test for her. Ramnath. Ball into two experienced batters. First ball in the over going for four. Three ones coming off the next four deliveries. Tries to play it late. I played it late, but couldn't get it fine enough past that fielder at backward point. Eight overs done. Barbados woman, 43 for three. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Samaru to continue. 11 runs came from her first over. She's bowling to Kaishona Knight. Lovely delivery there. And she'll be mindful that she was taken to task in her first over. The two batters running that first one hard, putting pressure on the fielders. Looking at the fielder, if there's even a hesitation of any sort, they look to amble and steal a second run. There are four fielders out, long on, long off, mid wicket and square leg.
So a good comeback over so far from Samaru after being taken for 11. Two runs coming from it so far. Very good comeback indeed. And uh, nothing would make her more happy than if she were to pick up a wicket in these last walls. Partnership has inched its way up to 30 from 23 balls. This pair came together at the fall of the third wicket, 16 for three in the fifth over. That's that. The last ball in the fourth over, that is. So nine overs completed. Barbados women, 47 for three. And when you look at how quickly they've gotten their runs, you know, it's certainly that is the, the good thing about this partnership so far. Both batters are scoring above a runner ball. So really good signs for Barbados heading into the rest of the innings. We'll be hoping that these two can continue and push on. Trinidad and Tobago women, of course, will be hoping to get another wicket soon to get into that middle order of, tr of Barbados. So far, Alia Alin and Kaisho on the night doing a, a pretty decent job for their team. Yeah, well judged single by these two experienced players. Indeed. Very good communication. Very early. Well run single. Now finds the vacant area to get another single. So more cricket like that. You know. That is how you build your innings. That is how you get yourself in a position to launch at the back end as well. It's a good rebuilding period for Barbados after being 16 for 3. Showing grit, showing determination. Showing good comeback indeed. How much can they get? 103 is the projected score. They're quite some way off. But they have been recovering well. Swept across the line, but straight to Steffi Sugrim. 50 comes up as well with that single. Yeah, badly line delivery there from Samaru. We'll wait to see the signal from the umpire. But in the meantime, the players hustle back for two. Let's see if she got some bat onto that one. Yes, it looked. Oh, it's a okay. Nice signal. Belated signal. But they are grateful for the ones Barbados, irrespective of how they come. Another quick single taken here to bring the tenth over to a close. Barbados women are 53 for three, and the players will have a drink.
we are back after the water break. The Barbados team clawing their way, crawling, inching even out of the hole that they were in. Yes, they need to take things phase by phase, game by game. Well, sorry, ball by ball, rather. <laughs> I've been here too long. <laughs> phase by phase, ball by ball. I've been here too long. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's about managing this period quite well. Usually, you see, after a drinks break, a wicked falls. So, it's important for them now to navigate this period from 10 to 5. So that's how they need to take it. 10 to 5, think about how they're going to um, play those overs before they get to the back end of things. The positive thing is the projected score will everything to remain as is 106. And the single being had from that delivery, second single in two. Samaru, she has come back well. Taking a beating in the first over. She's now just 18 runs from 15 deliveries. So both batters, their strike rate hasn't dropped below 100 since they got together. Remember these two came together when the score was at 16 for 3. They've added 40 runs so far. The scoring rate at which they're going at has been impressive. And they're not taking any chances. It comes down to what we've been told, good sensible batting, good sensible cricket, doing well at the basics. It hasn't been reckless, reckless cricket at all by these two. It's been smart batting. They've picked the bowlers to go to, to take on, sorry. They've manipulated the field well. We picked up the odd boundaries along the way. And it's easier that the partnership is 41 runs. And you haven't seen much flair. Yeah, so four runs coming from that 11th over. Barbados women are 57 for three. And the captain would have wanted these two to rebuild the Barbados innings and the rebuilding there. 16 for 3. After the last ball in the fourth over. And they've now seen some seven, seven overs expiring after that. And they are 57 for 3. So Ramarak, after her first over early to close out the power play, is back to bowl the 12th. Sweeping it. But straight to Brittany Cooper. He swept well Alia Allen since she's come out. Just about leg stump or there about that delivery. One is skied, it's high in the air. There's a fielder coming under it. She takes the catch. So Kaishona Knight perishes, looking to go big down the ground. And Kanisha Isaacs takes an easy catch. So the partnership is broken on 42. Is it a commentator's course? Or is it a water break course? <laughs> or both? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a combination of both. We're <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not too long, said. Normally, a wicket falls after the water break. And uh, 
here is night. Look into the heavens. Perhaps someone told her rain is coming. And skying that and taking easily. 58 for four. There are 42 runs. That partnership between Ali Alin and Kaisha on the night. Asabi Kalinda now, new batter. They'll be hoping for much of the same here. Barbados woman. And they'll also be hoping for Alia Alin to take it right up to the 20th over for them. So Karishma Ramarak with the timely introduction. Picking up that very important wicket, breaking that partnership. And we've seen this happen too often. Yes, it's a break in concentration for the the batters. And it's not easy to pick up where you left off prior to the water break. He's brought a slip in. Tighter field now. Just three out of the circle. Long on, long off, and mid wicket. But she wants to put the squeeze on the new batter. I think good captain C from Karishima Ramarak. Not allowing the batter to get off. Get away quite early. This one is full. It's played in the direction of that player on the mid wicket fence. And she gets off the mark, Asabi Kalinda. Going, going early and deliberate indeed. Clearing that fielder in the mid wicket region. Picking up a single. And releasing the pressure somewhat. And this pair will now have to start a rebuilding process. Again, that the previous one lasted some 42 runs. And sweeping backward square is Alin being restricted to a single by the field uh, coming in off the boundary. One wicket dot. One, one. This over, one ball left. Ram Harak will finish her second over. for four eight overs left 48 deliveries could they pick up a runner a ball in these remaining deliveries probably not Will they get a boundary or two somewhere in between there? Perhaps, yes. Will they get to 100, the projected score? We'll have to wait and see. But the Tridibagians don't mind. 61 for four. They'll consider themselves in the driver's seat. Sweeps and sweeps well. Some work to do for Kerbina Alexander. Running around to her right. They managed to get two. Alia Alien is disappointed. She thought the third one was on, but Asabi Kalinda wasn't paying attention to her call. The throw ended up being a wayward one in the end, so certainly a third was on. And she's saying, that was my call. I was going to the, the danger end. Samuel continues from the C.A. Paul Southwell end. A full wide delivery. 
but I saw the calendar's bad face turned at the last instant and it ended up just being a single that was mistimed to the onside. That was a very wide and full delivery. All she needed to do was place it through the cover area. But a bad face turning at the last instant. Oh, <laughs> was that tickled fine? Or is that buys? We'll wait to see. It seems to be a bit of a tickle, actually. It's buys given. So they'll take those runs, Barbados. On the contrary, the Trinidad and Tobago captain wouldn't be happy at all. Sixty-four for four. The Barbadians inching closer to a hundred in the first instance, and trying to go as far as possible after. After that, will they get to that hundred? Perhaps. But for them to get way beyond. 100 these two will have to bat and bat and pick up some boundaries no! very tight is summer at the end yeah i got to finish barry does women after 13 overs they're 68 for four eight runs off the over Ali 19 from 22. And it's Ramarak to continue her penultimate over on the Lozak Wood or Southern End. Use of the feet there from a Sahabi Kalinda. Still not finding her timing so far in this innings. Ram Harak will be encouraged by that chip. Sweeping, getting a single. And before the delivery, Ram Harak pushed back her backward square to the boundary and made some further adjustment making it again putting a fielder on the 45 Sweeping, going up and put down. Very good effort, get it in, getting in, the ball dropping. Both hands, excuse me. Yeah, that cross felt disaster for Barbados woman. Had that wicket gone down, Steffi Sugrim running in, trying to take the catch. Fortunately, fortunate Adam to be a woman. It's a chance going down for Alia Alin, who lives to fight. Sweeping across the line, there's a huge appeal for a caught behind. Umpire is unmoved. Some disappointment being shown by the Trinidadian team, Trinidad and Tobago team. Yeah, off her shoulder, Asabi Calendar. So a really good call there from umpire Brown. Down the ground, with, well across the line with power. There's a fielder running around, but in the gap, so a four. So some power being shown here from Asabi Calendar. Definitely. Much better control away from the fielders between the gap unlike two deliveries before where she played it a little squarer straight into the hands which popped out the 
projected score inching upwards 107 now. Goes down and paddle it to the fine leg area. The fielder gives chase. He should come back for two. Do, do, gets that quite easily in the end. There's a much needed impetus to the innings being added here from Calendar. She's now 11 of 10. After 14 overs ball, Barry this woman 76 for four. Indeed, and a nice little delicate tickle. And these two really putting down their heads and walking. It's called Bina Alexander has the ball in hand. She'll be bowling from the CA Paul Southwell Media Center end. Third man, point, cover, mid-off. Long on, long off. Mid-wicket. Field on the mid-wicket boundary. Short, fine leg. Humbling through t for a single. And at this stage, Trinidad and Tobago captain, I think, would be very happy with the proceedings. 77 for four. Uh -huh, that should be whites. And perhaps five whites. Yeah, actually, it's a white signal. I guess the batter really far across I like to see the replay on that one so it was a judge buys instead let's see what happened there yeah had she been in position it probably would have brushed her pad so I think it's a good call from the umpire instead of calling it white and she did move across her stump a change in the field now fine leg goes back third comes in the circle short third other fielders out are long on long off and mid wicket play nicely to the left of Kanisha Isaacs there at short mid wicket could the baby the steam make a charge for 130 and the bonus point. That will demand some acceleration. The last few of us considered happy hour. Tries to go down the ground, the inside edge that just passes our stump, goes to that field that was pushed back at fine leg. That shot would have been referred to as a Chinese cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 83 now for four after 15 overs. <laughs> 30 deliveries left. A runner ball from here will take them to 113. They will not get a runner ball. There will be some dot balls. 
Yeah, maybe some boundaries. Let's ram up back into the attack. Use of the feet. Nice placement. Kirby does well. They pick up two. No doubt at this stage, this peer thinking about getting to a hundred first as their target, the immediate target. Swings this one across the line straight to Karishma Ramarak, who accepts a simple catch. So that's the end of Alia Alin's innings. Five wickets down now for Barbados women. And with the chance of Barbados getting a decent score, be going back to the pavilion with Alin. Yeah, she just couldn't get the elevation to get it over Karishma Ramarak's head. She played that shot quite well throughout her innings. The elevation was certainly lacking there. And no pace to work with as well. So Ramara, Ramna, sorry, coming into the attack, picking up that much needed wicket for Trinidad and Tobago women. 85 for 5 after 15.2. So a partnership of 27 runs between Kalinda and Kalinda, sorry, and Aline. Aline. It's still very important that they were able to string together two partnerships after losing, losing three wickets in a hurry in the power play. Scantaberry, the new batter in, walks it to the onside and gets off the mark immediately. So now these two should be thinking about building another partnership. I don't think they have a choice. I don't think they'll believe that anything under 100 will be so defendable. But if we want to batter on these two until the end of the 20 overs. Quick single taken. <laughs> Ramnath, yeah. Ramnath, very aware of these batters. The Bajans are looking for every means of a single sprinting from a position just behind his thumbs to a mid position to ensure that that didn't happen. So it says that she's very much alert. So a dot to finish, four runs from it, a wicket as well. Barbados women are 87 for five. Trying to whack that one through the mid wicket region and missing lock, stock, barrel, everything. And too often we see batters trying to go through the mid wicket as opposed to playing to the covers, extra cover region. Extremely short. And extremely lucky to just be giving away just a single on that delivery.
going through everything again is Alexander. Shot third man, backward point cover, mid off. Long off, long on. Mid wicket. Feel the sweeping on the mid wicket boundary. Another extra to the score complements wide. bit of width off of there. No one back on the boundary and the cover area. But again, battery is closing from the delivery going to the on side. So certainly would have been free runs had she connected and passed any of those fielders in the cover area in the circle. Driven nicely down the ground. Nice timing. But just a single. Similar delivery and played similarly as well. Just not being mindful of the field and areas that she can target to get a boundary and 92 for five after 17 overs Ramna to continue and picking up that wicket in the over before. Looks to work it to the on side. Loud call of no from the non striker. Cadamant calendar, little adamant that that ought to have been a single. But Canterbury would have been coming to that danger end. That one perhaps coming off the back of the bat, popping into the ear, but Ramnath couldn't get around. Falling safely in no man's land at the end. An appeal, umpire not interested. May have come off the edge of the bat. Trying to sweep that one. Missing everything, keep a collecting. Dispensing with the bills just in case. Frustrated with herself, this Canterbury, for not being able to do something much better with that ball. The 18th over, a maiden one. Exceptional bowling from young Ramnath. You don't normally see and hear about that coming down into the last three overs of a T20 match. But young 
Ramnath making sure it happens. Yeah, she gave her absolutely no pace to work with in that over. She tried to make her own pace, tried to manufacture a shot, even tried to give herself some room. But just wasn't able to connect any of those deliveries in the over. So made an over, 18th, 92 for 5. Two overs remaining in the sentence. Sugrim, who has 2 for 7, is back. Oh, this is high in the air. There's a fielder coming under it. And she takes it. A third wicket goes down for Steffi Sugrim. Seems quite pumped up tonight. Trying to go for the big hit. Not controlling well, not timing. And an easy catch for the long off fielder. Ninety-two for six. After eighteen point one overs. Perhaps the pressure of that maiden over just before. Yeah, there's just two overs remaining. Well, eleven balls remaining in this innings. They have to find a way to score Barbados women. Need to put more runs on the board. Something that their bowlers can work with. So you expect shots like those. Unfortunately for Kalinda, just wasn't able to get the distance on it to take it over the boundary rope. Simple catch taken by Cooper. Driven good hand to it. Oh, there's a horrible mix up. And <laughs> yeah, it's even a comedy of errors here. And she eventually <laughs> has been run out. <laughs> Everything <laughs> happened on that delivery. It could have gone really bad for Trinidad and Tobago. Then it went back in favor <laughs> of Barbados. And then simply done by Ramarak to keep her calm and run out Alyssa Go Alison Gordon, who goes without scoring. Throwing at the wrong end. Then realize, hey, you know, there's one out, no one out here. It's at the other end. Train up, the keeper padding out, ricocheting to taking a deflection, going to another feeler who is thinking about plumbing, trying to hit the stumps directly. Said, no, I may miss. Train to another feeler who easily removed the bales. So it's all happening here at Warner Park. Can't fall God in there too much. I mean, at this stage of the game, you certainly have to be looking for every opportunity to, to score. It went to the left of Leon Kirby. She is a right-hander. She had to turn around and get the ball back into her right hand to try and execute the run out. So in the end, had both batters had the understanding that they were going through for the single, they probably could have made it. E it would have been an easy single, but serious breakdown in communication and paying the ultimate price for that. So Kelia Elliott, known for her leg spinner, leg spinning deliveries, so now has a job to do with the bat in hand. Right away, right away she looks to sweep. Wide signal by, the um, by umpire Maria Abbott. Eighty five for five, ninety two for six, ninety two for seven. And we have some ten balls left. Straight to the field at that time, so certainly no run on. Where will they get seven runs from to register at least something psychologically for them? Barbados. Over before this was a maiden. So far, four legal deliveries bowled in this over. They've only collected a wide, two wickets and two dots, and a wide in between. 
as a skipper, I'll say give me that any day. Full, full delivery, huge appeal. Finger goes up for Steffi Sugrim. Picks up a fourth wicket tonight. Fair to say she has been the destroyer of Trinidad and Tobago. Full and certainly crashing into middle. Wondering if they'll get to 100 now, Barbados. Losing the eighth wicket. 85 for five. 92 for six. 92 for seven. 93 for eight. So losing quite a few wickets on the trot here. Yeah, they are in danger of falling below 100. Also in danger of being bowled out. Barbados woman. Bruce now, new batter. Left handed batter, so immediately Steffi Sugrim changes her angle. She's going to come over the wicket. Or maybe not. Changes her mind again. Staying around to the left handed batter. Looks to go big and she's bold. The Steffi Sugrim picks up a fiver. You must applaud her accuracy. Tonight, she has been very economical bowler for Trinidad and Tobago. She hasn't had the wickets to back it up. Always been miserly throughout the tournament. Tonight, she picks up a back full. Five wickets to her name. A second five for, for the day. Yes, and uh, Schultz it was, I think, for Guyana found herself in a similar position. So elated were the Ghananese, they picked her up and passed part of the celebration. Yes, so Grim, another left-handed spinner, picking up five wickets. Marvelous display of bowling from her. Started in the power play, continued in the back end of things. Four wickets going down and that over, one by way of run out of course. And just nine runs, conceding nine runs was Sukrim. Doesn't get any better. Four overs. Nine runs, five wickets. The last over coming up to be bowled by Captain Karishma Ramarak. She'll be looking to finish things off. Allow the peel there. Absolutely no pace to work with Ramarak. It's not giving them any pace at all. Taking all the pace off that delivery. And they're going to be still thinking about the, the sentry. So Erin Dean... In the midst of all that, stroll to the crease. She's now about to face her first delivery. Players signaling three balls left or three balls board, whichever angle you want to take it from. This one is in the air, but it'll fall short of Ramna. So Erin Dean off the map. But more importantly, brings Scanterbury into face. The penultimate delivery of this inning. Could she eke five runs to get to 100? A psychological milestone. She gets one. That's all she'll have. And poor Dean attempting it, being run out, not being able to get there. But 
you must compliment the youngster valiant effort we also have to look at this bit of fielding and this bit of awareness from captain karishma ramarak when the bail or the stump is when the bail is dislodged or the bail is removed this is what you have to do you have to remove the stump with the ball in hand so really good cricket awareness there from Karishma Ramarak and sees Erin Dean short to finish off the innings Barbados woman 95 for 9 Trinidad and Tobago woman look the happier of the two sides heading off they require 96 runs after the innings break
Yeah, we're well, back live after the innings break. Trinidad and Tobago women, they need 96, 97 rather, to win against Barbados women. They also will be looking to pick up a bonus point, which can take them to second in this competition. Jamaica women already declared champions of this format as well. So a change in the top for Trinidad and Tobago women. Leanne Kirby along with Janaba Joseph to open the ball, the batting. So clear intentions being shown here early by the look of the opening pair by Trinidad and Tobago women. They are certainly going to go for that bonus point. They have nothing to lose. So Alison Gordon with the ball in hand. And I stand to be corrected. Watchful <laughs> by Leanne <laughs> Kirby to start. <laughs> and indeed, the Trinidad and Tobago team will want to dispense of this match. Yes, just probably as quickly as possible. Probably looking to get her eye in to start Leon Kirby. And again, again, a block. Once I think she'll finish with most runs. I don't think anyone will be able to catch her. The next best batter on the board is from Guyana, Shabika Gachnabi with 138 runs. So 97 runs to get. This one is short. Played just past the diving arm of that fielder. Nijani Kamabach. Four runs from Leon Kirby. Very destructive, explosive as it were. And that ball tearing away to the boundary. So the one chase is off for the Trinidad and Tobago team. Shows respect to that delivery. Yeah, so far, anything that's been bowled on the stump, she has opted to block it. Anything loose or away, not threatening the stumps, has shown aggression to it. So it needs to be tight on the stump here, Gordon, to finish. She is. She walks it into the onside and picks up a quick single to finish. First over ball, five from it. Trinidad and Tobago women are five for one. Five without loss, sorry. Let's hope a wicket doesn't fall now. <laughs> Where the commentators <laughs> goes. <laughs> yeah, five without loss after one over. <laughs> and they will be looking to keep this run rate at this minimum five. Ninety. Seven runs to get by any means. Not very many in 120 balls. Yeah, so what Trinidad and Tobago should be looking to do is first get themselves in a position to win the game and then they can look to drive it home to get that bonus point. So that's very important, winning the game first. There's an adage, runs on the board are already runs on the board. And Shanika Bruce with the new ball from the other end. So the Barbados team will always, they won the toss, they opted to bat first. And they will wonder if that would have been a good decision from their score, perhaps not. But runs on the board are already runs on the board. So it's up to the Trinidad and Tobago team to go now and make these runs. Being assisted by a wide on that occasion by Boos. Edge that flies to short third, Aaron Dean there. Not carrying. Looks 
to swing that one down the ground. Kirby missing it. Trying to hit it up at the airport. Two fielders out on mid wicket and long on. Wit given, but slaps it straight to that fielder in the cover area in the in the circle. If Kirby were to get going, it could be problematic for the Barbados team. Very powerfully built young lady. Much too wide on that occasion, and signaled by umpire Maria Abbott. There's a change in the field. Cover goes back, and mid wicket comes in the boundary, in the circle. Sorry, so she can't be too straight here with that field change. She usually angles the ball in. This time plays it past the field at point. So a good field change from Captain Kaisia Knight. Kirby off strike now. So Janaba to face her first ball in this match. She usually angles the ball into the right handers. Shanika Bruce. Cover comes back in the circle and midweek it goes out. Swan is played nicely. This is driven nicely from Janaba to start her innings. And eventually it makes it way over the boundary. So four runs to start with given and found the gap perfectly there, Janaba Joseph. Elegantly played. And that is all the four in my view from the beginning. Yeah, two overs bowled, 12 runs from it, Trinidad and Tobago women. Good start to their innings. After two overs, Barbados team was three for one. So well on their way, Trinidad and Tobago. Fighting to be second. So Gordon, back for her second. Guyana currently sitting in the second position. No wit offered. Straight to that field at cover. Yeah, they'll be looking at this match and hoping that Barbados women can do them a favor by beating Trinidad and Tobago women tonight or denying them that bonus point also. We'll have to wait and see how that will work out. So, Gordon to Janaba Joseph, but after Mark with a boundary. Beautiful defender. This one is straight. It's on the pads. Now the peel has been turned down. Certainly tailing down leg. Trying to cut that one. Not making any contact. And just do one run so far after five deliveries. Going straight through, missing everything. It's a dot to finish. One run coming from it. Three overs bold. 
Trinidad and Tobago women there, 13 without loss. It's in their quest to be aggressive and get that bonus point and pick up boundaries. They also have to forget, not they also have to think about minimizing the dots. Can't afford to build up that ball pressure. So when there isn't a boundary delivery for the taking, they still need to find a way to drop and run, hit the ball in the gaps as well. Massive hit. All oh, oh, one bounce into the circle. So four runs there. That fielder, they don't have a fielder in the mid wicket boundary, so she cannot be too straight. Shanika Bruce, the fielder is out at the cover boundary. There's one at long on as well. And if you bowl there in the power play with the field set, it's certainly a free hit for the batters. And powerfully built is Kirby. Drives it through the cover area this time. Third man backward point. Sweeper being put on the cover boundary. Extra cover. Mid off, mid on. Mid wicket, fine leg. Full toss. Hitch to Alia Ali, who does well in the end, getting that left hand out. Going eerily there was Kirby, but it's a deliberate shot. Getting it over the fielder in that mid wicket position. Kirby on strike, uh, edge. That flies away to the third, deep third boundary. Any way they get them, they'll take them. An educated edge, an intelligent edge, maximizing the use of the entire bat. Whatever you want to say, it's four runs. Goes down the ground this time. Aline does well to cut it off. Lots of work for her on the boundary. They hustle back for two. It's a really good run in by Janaba Joseph. And to call through Kirby for the second run there. She was always coming back to the danger end. Indeed. She called early. And it was her call. Our chances are they were going to go to her end, which is the closer end. Certainly too wide. You see the plan that Shanika is bowling to? She's just trying to keep it away from the swinging arc of Kirby. She doesn't use, she doesn't have a lot of foot movement, Kirby. Has a lot of power. She's all hands. So they're trying to stay away from that. So right there, but just a bit closer is what they're trying to work with. It's still too wide. 14 from the over. And still a ball left. Strokes it nicely out to cover. To finish the fourth. Trinidad and Tobago woman, 28 without loss. So Alison Gordon with the third over in the power play. Bowled well so far. Just six runs from her too. She's been keeping it nice and tight to the stumps. And on a good length, more importantly. Making it difficult 
for Kirby to get her away. Bit of room off her there. But plays it straight to Trisha and Holder. Opens the bat face. Janaba Joseph looking for the single. He was turned back. Perhaps a wise decision in the end by Kirby. She's clearly the slower of the two runners. And no doubt they were going to go at her end even though it was further away. Yeah, gives herself some room. Gets an edge. And flies past shot third and she picks up another boundary so a second edge resulted in a boundary and she may argue that she guided that one in the vacant for a second slip <laughs> i'm not certain how convincing she will be but four runs nonetheless That time she guides it, <laughs> but it goes straight to shot third. <laughs> Definitely. Base it out to cover to get a single to end the over. Five from it. Trinidad and Tobago woman there. 33 without loss. I got the impression she was thinking about going for a big hit on that occasion. But decided to change it. And pushed it out to the covers. And getting a single. 33 without loss in five overs. Going, going by any standard if you ask me. Scoring at a run rate of 6.6. .6 zero runs per over could they keep this up change of bowling Alia Alin to close up the power play see young Dean warming up as well she usually comes in right after the power play Two feelers out of the circle, mid wicket and long on. It's a good start from Aline. Go be playing and missing. Short third man backward point, cover extra cover mid off, mid on. There's a made wicket on the boundary. Long on, short fine leg. With offered, with accepted, and that will race away to the boundary for another four. And Kobe, she's not wasting much time. She has come out here with a mission to finish this job and to finish it as quickly as possible. I nearly sounded like one of my favorite Calypsonians out of TNT. Crazy. Slams it down the wrong this time. I can't place it well enough to get it past. Bruce at mid on. Mid off, sorry. So Joseph on strike now. change of field. Erin Dean goes back to deep third. And Kashona Knight is coming up as a square leg fielder. Oh, one beater. Goes between bat and pad. So nicely pulled from Aline. 
easy take for the keeper making it look a little flashy actually but just a dot in the school book looks to take a quick single there And the scores, they have been doing a very good job for this tournament. Modern day, all sorts of softwares and apps. Flashes at that one going past our bat to end the over. Five from it. And the end of the power play as well, Trinidad and Tobago women. They are 38 without loss. The final game in the CG United, Daffabet Blue Waters, Cricket West Indies' women's T20 Blaze. End of the power play being signaled by the umpire. And what I find quite often, Stacey Ann, fielding team they have the batting team on the pressure in the power play not that is the case here per se but as soon as the power play ends they release the pressure by sending out fielders this is actually the first time Kilia Elliott new bat bowler on hits it straight to Alia Aline who attempts Ooh. to run her out not Keep a bad effort yeah, this is actually the first time in the power play, if I can recall that. Well, apart from Jamaica, I believe. Still think. Had this is the first time there hasn't been a wicket loss in the, the power, power play. play. Actually, Winwood Islands, I beg your pardon, when they played their first game, they got to 93 without loss. But, but wickets in the power play has been... But no one can say this one is just played simply oh. to Ali Alin who puts it down. So a chance early to Janaba Joseph. And that may have turned the fortunes for the Barbados team. Yeah, well, I'll just continue. No wickets done in the power play has been a rare occurrence in this tournament. So certainly a good start from Trinidad and Tobago women. Hit firmly to that fielder at short cover. Oi. Looks to give herself some room. Bowler follow, follows her as well. So another dot. It's been a good change so far for Barbie, this woman. Just two runs off it. Looks to oh. use her feet. She got back in time. Did Kirby. And the knight pouncing on that one. Just lodging the bills. Oh, she's bowled her this time. So Kelia Elliott, after Janaba Joseph was dropped in the over, picks up Kirby was give her, ch to her team a fighting chance to get a victory and a bonus point here has been removed by Kelia Elliott. So a wonderful change of bowling from Kaisia Knight brings about the wicket. First one down for Trinidad and Tobago women at the end of the seventh over. Trinidad and well, Barbados women, 44-1. And... Uh it is once there is a change in bowling by any captain and a pick a wicket is had <coughs> no one could say anything it's a good change and that was the case here yes why i pointed out that change usually she goes they go to dean for the seventh over that's been the, their pattern throughout this tournament elliot is usually on a bit later or maybe it was a matchup of some sort just to get the ball away from Kirby and not into her. May have preferred facing the off spinner. 
So I think a really good move from the captain, good thinking from her. To get Elliot in early. And it paid off. Picking up a wicket and just two runs in that over. So Aline has a chance to redeem herself after after dropping Janaba Joseph. It's about to bowl to Joseph as well. So a chance to put that drop catch behind her. If she can pick up a wicket, of course. Starts a bit short. Rushes the batter for some pace. And it's a dot. Cooper. Showing some intent at, at trying to push for that single, that delivery, but easily sent back by Joseph. And that yeah. goes to everyone. Yeah, looking to pull it. Kept a bit low as well. And it beats everyone. Kept dying all the time. And goes away for a bye. So Trinidad and Tobago women they certainly won't mind those. Four by 44 for one now. The way the Trinidadians are, Trinidadians are approaching it is like they plan to end this in 12 overs or they about. Yeah, well, they are looking for that bonus point of me speaking about. Along with the victory, of course, they must win the game. And then they get that bonus point as well. And it will take them to second on the table. A chance for them to finish second after the 50 over tournament that they had. Something for them to smile about. So Cooper to face her first delivery. Nicely walked into the cover area to get off the mark. Trinidad and Tobago team. In search of Yeah, dot to finish. Six runs coming from that over. After it, Trinidad and Tobago women, they are forty six for one. So Elliot, picking up that very important wicket of Leon Kirby, gets a second over. She's facing, she's bowling to Brittany Cooper. And pulls this one. The middle wicket. Gets in position nicely, quickly onto it that time. But good feeling by Alyssa Scantleberry to cut it to cut it down to two. Lovely shot, and very good piece of feeling indeed. That had four written all over it when it left the bat, but that wasn't to be in the end. Oh, this is a high full toss. It has been helped well, but straight to that fielder. Waiting the signal from the umpire. 
says it's just dipping below the waist. Discussing it, the, uh, the umpires discreetly. Coming forward there, Cooper. A huge appeal. And these leggies, wrist pin. Pretty convincing appeal around the bat. Umpire Brown unmoved. Charlie is challenging. Wrist spinners to maintain good line and length. And a 50 came up as well in that over in this over. Short delivery walk to be done by Scan to Berry. She's been busy out there that's out this over. Five runs coming from the ninth over. Fifty one for one. It's always a challenge with the leggies, with spinners, to maintain good line and length. And uh, some of that coming out in that previous over from Elliot. But the thing about it is when they are on, they are really on. So Aaron Dean replaces Alia Allen, <coughs> young off spinner. Too short work to be done by Kaishona Knight on the boundary. He still managed to get two. Bit too short to start from Young Dean. She's done a commendable job for her team so far in this tournament. Still pretty young. Lot of learning still left to be done. Use of the feet and talking about a commendable job. This is an excellent change of pace from her. And change of length as well. To see the back of Brittany Cooper. Pulling Cooper down the track. And missing everything. And keeping a night easy job. Dislodging the bales.
And young Erin Dean, 17 years old, standing up for her team, picking up a big wicket of Brittany Cooper. I really believe the decision, the mandate, as it were, by Cricket West Indies to have at least two on the 21 players in your 11 has been paying dividends. Oh, looking to go down the ground. Pascal, new batter, Shanice Pascal. Almost squeezing that one onto her stump. Yes, that's something that they... Uh, they've certainly introduced, but a lot of the teams have been looking to go in that direction before this rule was introduced. Looking to sweep it this time. She gets a hold of it. They're looking for two. They're coming back. It's going to be tight. She makes it quite easily in the end. Not a lot of power in the throw. But yes, a lot of the teams have, have been going in that direction. You look at Trish and Holder, Nijani, Komabachi in this team. They have played this tournament for at least three years now. This is probably their third year playing this tournament. Walks this one into the gap to get a single. Zayda James as well. I think she made her debut. I please, I, I beg your apologies, Zayda, if I get this wrong. A 10 to overcome to the, the, um, a close. I think she made her debut at 15 at this level as well so a lot of youngsters have been putting their hands up early and a lot of the domestic teams have also been looking to incorporate youngsters so dean another youngster as well 17 years old has done a, an excellent job for her team ramnath from trinidad and Ram tobago Ram well. she's still pretty young do you have another s ram ramnath is what ramnath is, is 15 Ramnath is 16. And there's a 17 year old as well. Well, Erin Dean is 17 from Barbados. So Elliot to bowl her third. Two shot. Walk to the onside. They're looking for two. Joseph is still there. 10 of 17 deliveries. Yeah, so a lot of youngsters in the tournament. In all of the teams. Very high. Hit high on the bat as well. Didn't time it well. Janaba. Joseph. She's disappointed. Rightfully so. Only picking up a, a single from that delivery. This one has been helped. But straight to that fielder. A lot of work she's done in that area. They're looking for a second. Certainly not on. But a few deliveries that Trinidad and Tobago will be kicking themselves and saying they should have put those deliveries away. They are in a position to win the game, but they are looking to get that bonus point as well. Very important. Very high this time. She comes down the track. And no mistake. She's found the gap. Pierced the gap well on that occasion. So much needed boundary for Trinidad and Tobago in their quest to get second place. And no doubt the Guyanese team glued to the game. Back at the hotel shouting no doubt and chanting, Go Barbados, go! <laughs> 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 and of course... The, the whole of Guyana with them. Yes, I won't be able to watch this game. I'll probably be somewhere, <laughs> maybe asleep, <laughs> actually, <laughs> and just wait to hear the result. Yes, some persons are like that. They cannot take the, the pressure, the excitement, the changes. Use of the feet. Stumped, I'm sure. Yes, the finger goes up. The Shanice Pascal. Has to go back. So Elliot finds her line and length this time after a few deliveries that were overpitched. Well, too full, uh, actually. And Pascal is stumped quite easily in the end by Kaisia Knight. Very good work by Knight indeed. And uh, Trinidad and Tobago, in their quest for that bonus point, winning the match won't be sufficient for, to give them second. 
they'll have to grab a bonus point. And they've lost their third wicket. At this stage, I'm not certain. The question is if they will win the game. It's more when and how. Well, we see a stranger thing happen. <laughs> Take <laughs> us back to that game, Guyana versus the Leeward Islands, when if Guyana were formally in control of the game, Leeward Islands ended up being the victorious team at the end of that night. Exactly. So 33 from 54, a third wicket going down in quick succession. Dean flighted, hit hard, straight back to her, passing her as well. Crashes into the boundary now for four. It was a difficult chance if she got a hand to it. It's hit with a lot of power. Came back pretty quick, well within reach. Actually, the ball traveled over her hands. Well within catching distance, but struck with a lot of power by Joseph. And the young Dean, perhaps thinking I wouldn't want to get injured. Flighted, hit, pass, cover point. Could be back to back boundary head. The fielder does well to pull it back in. They're looking for a third. We'll settle for two. So <coughs> Janaba looking to take on young Dean. Get six off two so far. Perhaps the Drew keeping that one from traveling to the boundary. Waiting the dip, perhaps that may have gotten. Gotten there. Flighted. Hit to the right of the fielder who does well. Gives it to one. It would have been one actually because Aliyah Adin is out there on the middle wicket fence. The message definitely is up the tempo. I don't know if they're thinking about singing Francine's song from the 17, which one of the road 70s, which one of the road march are going down San Fernando. Down there is plenty tempo. Well, up in the pace, Trinidad and Tobago. They don't want to win this match. They want to be second. Captain. Karishma Ramarak facing her first delivery at that one, dot delivery. The seven runs are three or four balls so far in this over. With Orford but not getting her feet across to get it away. So another dot delivery. And young Dean is really working for her country. She's using all of her 17 year, years experience. Not that she played Full. that many. Full and driven back to the bowler. Should be the end of the over, I think, by my count. Yes. Over completed. After 12. Barbie, Trinidad and Tobago woman, sorry. And 71 for three. Just a matter of 26 ones needed. Dad! Dad! Is that real? Well hit! Away it goes! That is a ridiculous oh, no Look at this! Yes. yes, Trinidad and Tobago woman looking to get a bonus point to surpass 
Guyana on the table. Guyana women, of course, came into this round with eight points, but today they were able to win their game, which took them to 12 and secure a bonus point that took them to 13. Trinidad and Tobago women, they are nine points on the table. If they win, they'll get to 13 as well. Looking to play across the line there. But I think with the head-to-head, -head, Guyana defeating Trinidad and Tobago women in this round, Guyana will be declared second place, will get to the second place, will get the second place trophy rather. And this is why Trinidad and Tobago women, they're fighting hard to try and get this boat, that bonus point. They have gotten themselves in a position to win the game. 72 for 3, 25 runs needed from 47 balls. Current run rate 5.92. Yeah, they have to get it up to 6.5. Looks to go down the ground. It's high in the air. The keeper is under it and taken. So another wicket perishes in the quest for a bonus point here. Trinidad and Tobago women, four wickets down, 72 runs on the board. And uh, with that wicket, that bonus point inching away, drifting away from Trinidad and Tobago. And I could imagine the Guyanese jumping and shouting, Stacey Ann. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably would be celebrating at this point in time. That loss of that wicket. Sugrim, a fired up Sugrim, has been promoted in this batting lineup. She picked up five wickets today with the ball. She will be looking to do this with the bat as well for her team. Yeah, just a question I have to ask if you're Trinidad and Tobago woman. At the loss of that four wickets, do you still go hard at it and try and secure the bonus point and risk Losing a possibility? The game. Well, they are in a position to win the game, but you have to think about the batters to come. You no, know, not a lot. They haven't done a lot at the back end with the bat, Trinidad and Tobago woman. So if they are to lose another wicket or two here, they might reassess things and say, you know, we'll just settle with taking the win and finishing on a high. But for now, I think they'll still look to go at it and secure that bonus point with the win. Mathematically, they still have a chance. And it'll be nice with 25 runs to get in 46 balls. It would be nice if we were able to calculate how soon they'll have to get those 25 runs. But they have a lot of work to do. These two batters, Sugrim and Joseph. Joseph is there, 28, 24 from 24. So Joseph will really want to take the strike as much of the strike as possible and really be aggressive with it. You just sh should be looking to get 99 runs in about 15 overs or so if they are to get that bonus point. A lot of oohs and ahs going on out there. 25 runs to get? It's two and a bit overs for them to do it in. Two and a half overs, 15 deliveries. Doable. That's 14. So roughly 15 overs. Get that in. So another dot delivery. Barbados woman. Seem a bit pumped up after that wicket. A ring of feelers in the offside. Alison Garden with the wicket and just one run from it so far it's it's high in the air Tishan Hola comes around and completes a simple catch did she just waiting to see what happened there yes, she, she had did. it in her hand and she went down yes, so a simple catch taken in the end Trishan Holder She took the catch 
held on to it long enough and then she went down in some agony. So we're hoping that she's okay. Perhaps that may be a blessing in disguise for the Trinidad and Tobago team because it means that Joseph should remain on strike. Yeah, well, it's just one delivery. Actually, I think that's the end of the yeah. over. Yeah, so Joseph is on strike. And had that not wicked not been taken, they were going through for a single. So it meant that Sukrim would have been on strike at the start of this over. But we're working out the strategy there. So they have about two overs to get these runs in Trinidad and Tobago women. The problem is they're losing wickets as well. Five wickets down now. Two wickets in that over. One run coming from it. So Dean with her third. Joseph on strike. Oh, there's a huge... Oh, actually, she's been bold, hasn't she? Yes, she has. The Barbados with the fight back. A sixth wicket goes down. And Dean again. Rocking back the stumps as she would have done earlier in her spell. Brittany Koo actually was, she was stumped. Bringing Brittany Koo and Cooper down. She was bold, Brittany. And uh, at this stage, would the reassessment be done by Trinidad and Tobago? Five done. Wickets down. Should we just forget about the bonus point and try to get these 20... Five runs. Yeah, I think they we might see that approach now from these two batters. Sao was quite capable with the bat. She opens as well. Not known for her power hitting. But she can play that sort of game that's required now for them to just pick up the singles, put away the, the bad deliveries. So Aaron Dean. Picks up a second wicket. She has been pretty impressive, the youngster. She's bowled really well. Varied her pace quite well. She's been reading the batters well also. Looking at what they're doing. And adjusting nicely. Big, big wicket. Another wicket. So Dean now on a hat-trick. So Saul right, right away. Looks to slam it into the offside. Goes aerially. And Trishan Holder completes a simple catch. Now the game swings in favor of Barbados women. <laughs> Is the Trinidad and Tobago team grabbing, pulling defeat from the jaws of victory? We did say earlier runs on the board were runs on the board, but this really should have been an easy game for Trinidad and Tobago. They're appealing out there, asking, appealing for a timeout. We've seen this happen <laughs> recently in the World Cup. <laughs> she, she Lanka and Bangladesh, Angela Matthews was timed out. Shakib Al Hassan, the captain in that game. Mm. Fair to say, with the celebrations in some of the games, when they had that series with Bangladesh versus Sri Lanka, they didn't like that at all, Sri Lanka. Barbados women appealing for a timeout. I don't think Ramnath expected to be out there so quickly. <laughs> so I don't think so. So facing that delivery and quickly back into the shed. So Ramnath opened the batting for Trinidad and Tobago in the 50 over version of things. Coming in at number nine. Three wickets to get to win the match, Barbados. Putting a little pressure. That's Elliot, is it going into first slip? No, it's a Sabi calendar there at first slip. So tightening the screws here. Kaisia Knight. And using a genuine first slip as opposed to a slip and a half, which we've been seeing employed quite often. Right away, she's forward. And block in to keep out that hat trick delivery. So, hat trick averted. Aaron Dean. 
three wickets to get Barbados for victory. And I think the Guyanese are celebrating fully and wholly now because they should be aware that Trinidad and Tobago have Ease given up the feet. The I think she's taking it. I think she's taking it. They're celebrating a diving catch from Alison Gordon. And another wicket goes down in this over. Exceptionally done there and brilliant, brilliant. Captain C exactly. having that fielder so close for Ramnath. A third wicket goes down and all of a sudden we were saying, what were we saying earlier? Troy, <laughs> you were saying, <laughs> I mean we said stranger things have happened. Runs on the board already, runs on the board. Trinidad and Tobago, they've certainly, they've certainly taken themselves in a hole here. No need 25 runs of 38 balls. But when you look at how many wickets they have remaining in the shed, just two to play with. Not, not too confident in the position. And this game would have slipped away from Trinidad and Tobago. And Barbados, they believe that they can win this game outright. Samaru, new batter. Has batting capabilities. We haven't seen it much in the tournament. Can this be the day, the final match of the tournament, as she shows up and show her skill with the bat? It's much needed here for Trinidad and Tobago. Corbin Alexander at the non strikers end. Cricket, the game of glorious uncertainties. Adult. Beautiful <laughs> stomping. Anything, everything. Why shouldn't they? Wickets are falling like rain. And we've known from the onset, runs on the board are already runs on the board. We've known cricket is a glorious game of the game of glorious uncertainties. And who would have believed this? Trinidad and Tobago will now have to fight to win this match. Driven almost, almost a fourth wicket in the over. Almost an identical catch as well. Diving forward low. So three wickets in that over, made an over. Three wickets in that over. Unbelievable stuff from... Well, not unbelievable. <laughs> We're seeing it manifest before our eyes. Three wickets, three dots. Aaron Dean, a star is born for the Barbados women. Four wickets, 12 runs, just three overs. Trinidad and Tobago women, a lot for them to do if they are to pull off a victory. So yeah. while two overs ago, we were talking about them possibly getting a bonus point there were no questions about whether or not they were going to win the game no all the questions are being asked about that Kilia earlier to continue sweep shot to start dot delivery i actually made the statement it's not if trinidad and tobago will win the game but when and how they did get themselves in a position to win the game as Corbina Alexander is off strike. <laughs> and things can change so quickly. The Trinidad and Tobago world basically falling apart. Or has it really fallen apart already? The penultimate peer at the crease. When you talk about putting pressure on a new batter, this is it. A slip, a fielder very short at extra cover. One tight at mid wicket. Even the fielders in the deep, they're not fully on the edge of the boundary. A very good delivery. That one popping up from Elliot. It's all happening here at Warner Park. 
Leave alone from Samaru. And Elliot asking for the ball, not wasting any time. So one more delivery remaining in this over. Four dots in it and a single. Driven. The field is in the circle at mid-off. So a dot to close out the 15th. Trinidad and Tobago woman there, 73 for eight. Where can Trinidad and Tobago get 24 runs? How can Trinidad and Tobago get 24 runs? Could Trinidad and Tobago get 24 runs? That is the biggest question right now, Troy. And no doubt the coaching staff, some bite fingernails, some pluck here, here from the head, some do all sort of things, some pace, some go in the corner and don't watch the game. Yeah, so young Dean. Finish off our spell of bowling, our full quarter of overs to be completed here. Can we see a third Pfeiffer for the day? It's been the day of Pfeiffer so far. Casey Schultz picking up one. I'll bet on that. In Guy uh, for Guyana against Windward Islands, Steffi Sugrim picked up one just now against Barbados. So can Aaron Dean? Replicate those two bowlers, left arm spinners. On this occasion, oh, it's a huge appeal, and the finger goes and up. She does it, and, and she does it. It's a Pfeiffer for Aaron Dean. So a third Pfeiffer today, the final day of the Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze, and we have seen three spinners picking up five wickets each, and a ninth wicket goes down. And it's getting darker and gloomier for the Trinidad and Tobago team as the final pier is at the crease. So Kanisha Isaac walks to the middle. Can Dean go one better and pick up six? Very <laughs> good question. will be the, at the back of our mind. And at this stage, I believe the pundits will think so. So Isaac and Samaru, the last pair in the middle for Trinidad and Tobago. And who would have believed that we would have been here at this position? Perhaps the Barbados team. The scoring has been stalled. Wickets tumbling. Dean to Isaac. Gets across and plays it into the cover area. And earlier we were speaking about the Trinidad and Tobago team having trouble. Chasing down runs. And this Barbie, the team, they don't really want to get Isaac off strike. Dean, two balls left to try and get six wickets in the match. She tosses it high, and she'll have to wait for her final ball. It seems like forever since the Trinidad and Tobago team got a run. Picked up two there. Full delivery, Isaac. Plays it over the head of Gordon, who's in really close. Picked up a catch there, <coughs> almost pulling off a second one in that same position. And so Dean, she will have to wait until next year to try and get six <laughs> wickets in the T20 Blaze, Stacey Ann. Yeah, she's just done marvelously well for, for Barbados. Very young bowler, just 17 years old. A fighting character she is. I was told by Shakira Selman, our co-commentator, she picked up a split well-being heading into this tournament. And the way she's shown up with the ball and even in the field, 
with that split webbing speaks a lot to her strength and determination as a youngster a very good find for Barbados women yes they've been done and out in both formats lost their title in both formats lots of things have gone wrong for them they've missed their battles their key battles missed two games they lost Shamelia Connell as well due to injury but they've still found a way to fight in certain situations tonight fighting with the ball after what some may have thought to be a paltry score on the board they managed to fight and by way of some brilliant captaincy as well from Kaisi and Knight sensing the occasion getting those fielders closer around the bat so Alia Alin with ball in hand to Samaru Oh, and that was close. Beaten comprehensively. If they haven't won the game just yet, Barbie, this woman. And they know they have themselves in a position to win the game. A while ago, we were saying that about Trinidad it's and Tobago women. <laughs> but I'm not certain that the balance, the scale could swing back that much, if at all, to favor Trinidad and Tobago. They have all the time in the world to do it, so to speak. Some 22 runs to get 22 walls. I run a ball. And now for the first time in this batting innings, Trinidad and Tobago now will require six runs and over for the first time. Need to appeal, but that's certainly going down leg. Now it's up to more than 22 now from 21 balls for the first time in this match. The runs are more than the balls. The and balls wickets will do that. Yes, soaking up those b deliveries. Drying up the well of deliveries. The Samaru gets off the mark. Tenth delivery to do so. But these two, they are there, struggling on, fighting on. Their country will be hoping for a miracle to miraculously win this game from this position. Stranger things have happened. Extremely strange things have happened in, Chris in, in cricket. I'm not certain it will happen tonight. And Aline would love to be the one pick up this wicket which will be her only wicket for the game were she to do that and in the midst of all those wickets tumbling we can safely say that Guyana has secured second place in this Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze Tournament Trinidad and Tobago had to score those runs by the 15th over to get that bonus point if they are somehow able to go on and win this game. Diana will still receive the second place trophy. 17 overs bold. Trinidad and Tobago women, 76 for 9. 30, 24, the top two scores. The next three and five for the Trinidad and Tobago team. They were 28 without loss at the end of the fourth. And over the last five, six overs, tumbling, wickets were just tumbling like rain. Yeah, certainly, Trinidad and Tobago, they did make an effort to se secure that bonus point. But somewhere in the middle, they lost it. Lots of wickets started tumbling. And then it seemed like they forgot about winning the game. Everybody came out with the bonus point in mind. You cannot fault them. Coming second would have certainly boosted them. Also, there's prize money of 5,000 US coming second. But at some point in time, they lost it. And too many wickets fell in quick succession. Now, Barriers women are in pole position. Just one wicket to get. Required run rate is up to seven runs per over now. Shanika Bruce with ball in hand. 
bowled two overs for 22 runs prior to this. And the win for Barbados in this match will relegate the Windward Islands to the seller position. An optimistic appeal there. The Barbados team, they are fielding an expectancy. They expect any moment, every delivery, any delivery will produce a wicket and give them full match points. Walks this to square, gets a single. Looking for two, not on. And the Barbie the steam so much into it. This the wicket keeper has gone to a full point run chasing down that ball to to point. But these two it looks like they've opened up their shell a little. Tickling here for one, tickling there for two. That's what they need to do. The area at square leg is wide open. So if anything is too straight, the batter can look to work it there, pick up one or even two. Hit aerially and hit over the fielder at mid-off. The fielder gives chase. Come a batch and pulls it back in, so they get two. A little more power, and that would have brought about a extremely rear and precious boundary as of the last few overs. But who knows? 18 required from 15. Change of field. Mid off goes back to long off. A Third comes in the circle. Goes across the line. But just a single. They're looking for two. More strong arm from Aline. Only to that second run. And it looks like these two haven't written off the game as yet. Certainly not. They're going to look to fight here, these two. There are singles to be had. Just need to play it smart from here on out. It's one more wicket to get. Trinidad and Tobago women, if they are able to just minimize dots from here on out, pick up the R2s, they're in the game still. Looks to go down the ground. Can't pass, mid off. 17 it is. From 13 deliveries. So wide, so that'll help them. You'll welcome that Trinidad and Tobago. A nice little handy partnership win. Not very many. So that it's one. actually a no ball. Okay. So Samaru, if she looks up, that disappointed look that she has, she'll see that she has a free hit. Indeed. <laughs> so a no ball, a free hit no. 15 required from 13 deliveries. Can she put this away, Samaru? She's tried and failed in this over so far. Free hit coming up. There are a few ways she can be out from this free hit. Played and it well. Walked it well into the gap. They should look for two. Turned down by Isaac. Just one. Perhaps they needed to run that first one a little harder, a little faster. Seven runs coming from that over. Two overs remaining. 14 runs still to get 
for Trinidad and Tobago women. These two fighting. The game isn't over yet. It isn't over until the fat lady sings. And she is on her way to the stadium. She isn't here as yet. No doubt she'll get here sometime during this over. But these two fighting, if ever there was a fight, at the end, at the death by batters, this is it. And that is why it's important when teams are practicing your 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 batters get a chance to bat. Driven. Can't pass the fielders. Oh, there's a mix-up. And it's done easily. Barbados woman. Winning this game. Pulling it off out of nowhere. A run out to finish things off. Barbados woman picking up the victory here. Trinidad and Tobago woman crestfallen. Barbados woman victorious in the end. Very, very unfortunate way to go. But it's understandable. They were fighting. Perhaps if there wasn't that little indecision at the onset, they could have made that single. But these two young Trinidad and Tobago batters, they inspired some hope at the dying moments when it seemed as if everything was lost for Trinidad and Tobago. They sparked life. They rejuvenated it. But it didn't last long. It's so a Barbados woman celebrating their victory. So too would be the Guyanese. Who would have probably done, started doing that already. They would have perhaps done, celebrate, done their celebrations by now. Yeah, and young Dean fittingly gets to walk off in front of the players with that ball in hand. Picking up that fifer. A fine for the Barbados woman in this tournament. She's been one of the standout performers throughout the T20 Women's Blaze Tournament. Barbados woman winning by 13 runs in the end. And that is the end of the Cricket West Indies Women's T20 Blaze. A day filled with fifers. Definitely. <laughs> three, in fact. <laughs> three fifers. And uh, you couldn't have asked for a better opportunity than a 17-year-old sealing off the Fifers in the final. As we slip away from Warner Park, we say congratulations to Jamaica for winning the T20 Super Blaze, as well as the Barbados team for their victory, and Guyana for coming second. It's been a wonderful experience bringing live to you here from Warner Park, and we must commend the ground staff, the security, the TV, and camera crew. They did a wonderful job, the commentators, the chef, the security, and uh, everyone who would have been involved in making this happen. Cricket West Indies is T20 Blaze being brought to you live and direct from St. Kitts at Warner Park. And we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for staying with us for the last few weeks as we brought to you the Super 50 and uh, now the T20. And you're going to be seeing us sometime in the future when we are not certain. But we hope you'll join us there. So thanks to everyone for making it possible and tuning in. And you're the spectators. And did I mention caterers? They did a wonderful job. And the St. Kitts Cricket Association for hosting this tournament. Good night. Thank you. And be safe.